If you're like most banjo players, one of the first songs you ever learn is Kirkle Creek. So you've got your solo down and you go to jam it with some friends and you quickly realize that there's more to the song than just playing the solo. If you're in an old timey jam, everybody can play the melody all at once. But in a bluegrass jam, just the lead player should be playing the melody and everybody else should be doing some form of backup. I previously did this video on all kinds of variations you could play for your melody. In this video, we're going to work strictly on interesting ways to play back up to the song, going all the way from very simple to somewhat complex. To do this, you'll want to know the chords to the song, so here they are. We'll be thinking of it as if it's in the key of G, playing without a capo. If you're backing up fiddles and mandolins, they usually like it in A, so take everything you learn in this video, put a capo on the second fret, and you're good to go. So if you're somewhat on the beginning side, you just think of your G, C, and D chords as being open, C chord, D7 chord, in place of the D. And we can simply play our rhythm by doing this. Third string pinch, fourth string pinch, third string pinch, and then I like to do a half note pinch there. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Kind of accents what's going on with the melody there. When you get to part B, you simply keep the G measures going for three measures and use the same ending as part A where you do the D7 pinch with the melody. Dun, 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 If you're a little bit farther along in your chord knowledge and you know your movable shapes, then you'll want to use them so you can get what's referred to as the boom chick sound. This is especially important as the tempo gets a little bit faster. So using those movable shapes, one thing I like to do with the quick C chord is to take my third finger and just simply lay it between my fourth and second fingers and that will give me the equivalent of a bar chord, C chord, and I go right back to my G. When you move to your D chord, Something you need to train your fingers to do is to move fingers three and four down and change the inside fingers, swap out the strings that you're playing. It's very common that as you try to go back to D, this, these fingers will try to pick up. So try to avoid that. One thing we can do to jazz up our rhythm a little bit is to add some syncopation. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three. And there I'm using just a two finger pinch. And then I do the same thing against the D to G move. When I do the B part in this manner, I actually throw in a little bit of a J.D. Crow rhythm. So that third measure, the one, two, three, and four, very common in JD's backup. In all these vamping kind of backups, I like to move my hand up towards the neck, get that mellower tone, instead of a little bit too biting back there. You can see I've done that a little bit over time. Another thing you can do is to do some rolls in the background. So this will serve somewhat as a counter melody. You're not trying to copy the melody, but get some rolling notes going, something like this. A common Ralph Stanley method for backing up like this would be to use forward rolls, something like this. on this with the rolls it's okay to have your hand a little further back brighten up the tone just a bit. 
So when I get to part B in this, I actually do a little takeoff on the banjo melody, which is not exactly the way a fiddle player would play it. So I might do something like this with alternating rolls. <laughs> All of the ideas presented so far are appropriate backup for playing behind a mandolin or playing behind a fiddle. Our ideas are being played down here in the lower register, their melody notes are up in the higher register. When we back up a guitar, if we're playing down here we are in their register, but we also got to keep in mind that when the guitar, if it's just one guitar in the jam, they're dropping out, they're leaving out that sustained rhythm. So one thing we can do is just play simple chords, and I like to do this by actually brushing the back of my fingernails here. So, uh, G, 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 C, G, 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 D, G. So that's one way to accommodate that sustained ringing sound. If there's another guitar player playing the rhythm, then we probably want to sort of get out of their register if they're playing their solo down in normal guitar range. And we can do that by simply thinking of G, C, and D up here. And at that point, we're just doing our regular vamps. When playing a counter melody to the guitar while they're soloing, we'll want to be up here in the high register, assuming they're playing down in the lower register. Keep in mind the caliber of the guitar player that you're playing with because this could sound like some noodling that's competing with the solo rather than just something that's counter to the melody and enhances it. I'll play the part A once and the part B once just for demonstration in this high counter melody. One, two, three, four. Quick mention that when you're performing live on Cripple Creek in a jam setting, you'll always want to play each part twice. That's true in your solo, that's true in your backup. We'll conclude now by playing several of these backups behind a guitar and a mandolin. And there'll be a scrolling tab going across the screen so you can see what's being done. As always, dig in and have fun. <laughs>